Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Canyas, recording episode 270 something. And today I have with me Kim, Kim Beach, the founder and CEO at Insure Women. Uh, and we're recording on December 29th. So the weird week between Christmas is gone, but it's not quite the new year and nobody's back in the office yet. Uh, so we are we're working though. <laughs> we're probably the only two people working in insurance today. Uh, so Kim, thank, thank you for, 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 uh, for joining me today. How's it going? Oh, it's going great, Tony. Thank you so much for having me. Wow. What, what an honor. Um, the, uh, yeah, it's so, my, so my, my pleasure. glad to be here. <laughs> my, my pleasure. So, so we connected, I don't know, maybe a month, month and a half ago. Uh, mm -hmm. I happened to notice the name of your company and without even taking a look at what you were doing, I immediately, uh, messaged you and said you should come on the podcast uh, <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> you're <because>, great <laughs> uh, in the 12 years i've been in insurance uh th that entire time more than half of the industry is made of of, of women in fact it, it's something like 60 percent last last mm -hmm. that i looked at the numbers yeah. and yet the leadership both in the carrier side where i live and in the and in the agency and broker side where, where, where you live uh is pitifully far away from 50 50 right, right. and in fact we're the gonna last change that <laughs> amen the, the last numbers i saw were something like 17 percent of senior executives in the carrier side and yeah. i've never seen numbers for for agency principals uh but bet you it's yeah similar. i actually saw it and it's like 35 percent. but i think that also has a lot of um captives in there you know a lot of people that have state farm also oh, you know, okay that, okay okay because i don't 35 percent seems extremely I, high i, I, I would be surprised yeah if, i mean that, if, that's if not it that that, yeah that's yeah. not an independent agent number yeah sure, so so but, if yeah if just just my my, my own uh let's say unscientific <laughs> uh right, right so 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 just thinking of the agencies that, that i worked with uh mm -hmm. first as a sales manager well first as as, as as an underwriter then as a sales manager for two different carriers and okay. then again as an underwriter and i had different territories i, I had a territory in in Mel okay. maryland delaware maryland okay. and delaware with nationwide yeah. ag then i had a territory in california with okay. allied and then a territory in california with american modern and finally i had a territory in mississippi of all places with liberty oh. And okay. if, if all of in all in all of those places, I could count with I probably served 150 agencies. Okay. Out of those, I could probably count on one hand the number that were women led. Uh, so at least in my experience, that's a uh, bad percentage, <laughs> right? Uh, 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 at least yeah. in my experience, I, I agree with you that 35 percent is, is probably a high number. So yeah. so so what what is insure, insure women? All right. Uh, well, Insure Women is a community, but it really is the mission of Insure Women is to empower women in the insurance buying process through education and just giving them confidence in the insurance buying process and also to make sure that they're treated with respect and attention that they deserve. Um, and it kind of went from being kind of a consumer focused company because then I had a lot of female insurance agents like contacting me and saying, wait, what are you doing? Like, can I be part of this? So there are so many female agents out there that are passionate about serving women because they, they see this underserved need out there. There are a lot of women, especially, you know, like maybe divorced women and widowed women um, that just really, it's, it's, it's an unserved need that needs to be taken care of. And there are female agents that want to be part of that mission to serve these women in the insurance buying process. So it's gone from being, you know, focused on women buyers to maybe, you know, to now actually being focused on a secondary focus on women sellers and creating a network of these insure women across the country that are going to serve the women buyers in their markets. So, what 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 is it that 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 led you to come up with the with the idea? What was it that you saw that was broken in in the traditional? Yeah, so I, I am probably um, I'm, I'm three years into my insurance career now. Um, <laughs> so I'm a very, a very young uh, newbie in the insurance business. Uh, my background was actually in the television business. Uh, I worked for a large CBS affiliate in Cincinnati. 
uh, for uh, probably about 18 years. Um, and then kind of at the end of my career, we got bought by a big uh, con conglomerate out of Maryland. That's all I'm going to say. And things just started changing. Compensation started changing. And I was just kind of like, you know, I'm kind of more toward the end of my career, but I was like, okay, I don't want my career to end here like this. This is just not, you know, a very positive situation. And my husband is a lifelong uh, life insurance guy. Um, so he's got like, well, Kim, you know, you're at a good age to sell long-term care. That's what he said to me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Uh, so I, I did, I, I just, quit my, you know, my, my good job with the TV station and just was like, Hey, you know, I want to do something that means something, you know, and I do think, you know, selling life insurance, selling long-term care insurance and impacting people's lives, you know, especially at the end of their lives, um, by providing the service is, is critical. Um, so I got licensed, um, and then kind of through some other, um, connections, we found out that I could start a scratch agency with Erie insurance. Um, out of Pennsylvania. They're just, just a fantastic company. So again, my husband's like, well, Kim, why don't you start a PNC agency? <laughs> you know, again, like, we've been in our community a long time. There's no storefront agencies. Um, and I just thought, wow, I would love to serve my community by providing the service, kind of same thing, you know, and, you know, I've always been very involved in, you know, the school systems and a lot of the different, you know, organizations. So just thought, it, you know, it'd, it'd be a nice way, again, to end my career. So got appointed with Erie and launched my agency in October of 2018. And almost immediately was hit with this realization that women are, are not a, a lot of times not the insurance uh, purchaser, you know, and I just was kind of confused. A lot of my college educated friends who perhaps didn't even work um, did not want to have anything to do with insurance. So kind of right away, I was like, OK, if I'm not going to call my friends, uh, who am I going to call on? You know, so then I started. And, but, by the way, well, the, what? The, and, by, and by the way, that, that is uncommon. Uh, in right, if there's anything we know, we know in the, in the marketing world is that women yeah. make most purchase decisions. Right. So, so why not insurance? I, I didn't know that. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think it was just kind of because I had a fresh perspective, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I just came into the insurance industry and I was just like, wait, this is kind of crazy. Like nobody want, no, none of my female friends want to talk about insurance or, you know, and then just, you know, obviously again, like a lot of, widowed women, divorced women never had to handle it. And so, you know, they're put in this position, you know, and, and probably in a bad, you know, in a bad situation. Um, so just one more thing that they have to, you know, learn and all that. Um, so anyway, I don't know, it just kind of was like an aha to me, like, okay. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll just kind of focus on my marketing on women, you know, and just, and really specifically single women, because they're the ones making the, the decision. And I really kind of enjoyed helping them, you know, I mean, I felt like I was really being of assistance and maybe somebody that, you know, they weren't being helped by somebody else. So, um, and just kind of, you know, started just like kind of watching this like whole thing come, you know, come, come to fruition, like this whole year, um, you know, and then I also started like handling a lot of young single women, which I enjoyed, you know, I was like, okay, good. These women are learning, you know, and I enjoyed educating them and, you know, really teaching them what are they buying. Um, and then at the end of COVID, uh, well, not the end, because we're not at the end, um, but at the end of that year of 2020, uh, we were, my son was home and he actually started in an insure tech business as well. He actually started it for me. So that's kind of a whole nother story, but um, he started it because when I first started in the business, he's like, what's the hardest thing, mom, about your new, you know, your new company? And I was like, getting information from people. So he actually started a deck page collection business called InsureGrid. Uh, anyway, that's, that's all my plug I'll do for him. <laughs> um, but we were watching movies when we all had COVID and we watched that movie, The Founder. And it was Michael Keaton. And he was just talking about, you know, to the McDonald brothers, like, hey, you have this great, you know, system, like you should like, you know, franchise it across the country. And that just got, got me started thinking like, okay, this is a problem in Cincinnati that women aren't comfortable buying insurance, you know, then it's a problem everywhere. Um, and just really kind of started connecting with women in the insurance industry, um, just, you know, different people that are involved and, you know, and in different parts, I mean, agents, consultants, and, and just kind of kind of started thinking, wow, you know, is there, and then I started looking around, like, 
Is there something out there for women in insurance? Uh, guess what? No. <laughs> I mean, you know, just went online, you know, did that whole Google thing, like, okay, women, insurance, and you know, I mean, there's a few associations, but there's not really anything for women insurance buyers, which I have to say, I think the financial services business has done a good job of focusing on females and their, you know, females, you know, wealth management, that kind of thing. But the insurance business really has not caught on yet. Um, so I just, I don't know, I just started thinking like, there really should be something, you know, but I'm like, okay, I already have one company and I don't, I don't really need another company. But, you know, then again, my son was like, mom, you need to start it. And I that was like, you know what? You're right. So I think on January 6th, I went on to GoDaddy or whatever and like started looking around and Insure Women was available. And then I was really like, oh my God, this is, yeah, this is going to happen. And I launched it on uh, March 8th of 2021, uh, which is International Women's Day. Um, and really just kind of launched it locally for myself to kind of focus on women. Um, and then have been have kind of spent this year, you know, just talking with women, you know, that meet me through, you know, any through podcast or, you know, through LinkedIn. Um, so I'm starting kind of to build that and going to launch it nationally next year. Um, actually in January, start kind of, you know, accepting members into the insure women community, getting sponsors and all that kind of thing. So we really just, you know, want to help help women insurance buyers and also connect female insurance agents and, and really anybody that's a stakeholder in the insurance business. Because there's, as you know, a lot of ancillary businesses in the insurance industry. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It makes, makes perfect sense. So, so, so locally, what, what, what has it become locally? How, how many local Cincinnati well, I mean, agents have, I mean, I have got a involved. little bit mm -hmm. of, you know, I got a little bit of, um, of PR and stuff when I launched. And so I did, you know, get, you know, business. I mean, I have, interestingly enough, I had a lot of people reaching out to me for life insurance and also women for long-term care. So it, you know, it def and I, I definitely think, you know, women see it I mean, once obviously people kind of realize what it is, like it's more of an, a safe space for women to buy insurance. So, you know, and I haven't put that much marketing money behind it, you know, but, but obviously that that's, that's going to come at some point, but, you know, th the idea is to really create a community for women and then, you know, for female agents specifically, and then educate them and train them and, you know, on how to, how to take care of women buyers. And then also just, you know, give them a chance to, you know, to interact and meet each other and best practices and, you know, round tables for commercial insurance sellers. I mean, round, you know, round table, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously the sky's the limit once you kind of put a community of women like that together. So. Perfect. Makes sense. I'm, I, I'm glad uh, uh, I, I found you early on. It's, it's yeah. very exciting to, to I, I'm looking forward to, to see how, how, how it, how it, how it develops as, as it Me expands too. beyond the local area. <laughs> Uh, because I, I do I do agree that that there's definitely a, a need in the community, uh, and I, I I think that 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 you'll find a lot of uh, of of female agents who 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 feel that they've never had the right support. Right. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, especially through this year of COVID. I mean, I've talked to women you know, that are working in their basements. I mean, you know, and really feel, uh, I, what I hear a lot is I feel like I'm on an island, you know, because even if they're in an agency and they're an agent, they're in an agency of, it could be all men. Like I did, I talked to one woman last it's week. People, very yeah, common, she's yeah. Like, yeah, she's like, I'm the only female yeah. and there's, you know, 12 males. So I think this idea of community and, you know, just creating this kind of, spirit of you know togetherness uh i don't want to say sorority that seems a little weird but <laughs> sisterhood how about that <laughs> make, make make sense make, make sense so um the website is uh insurewomen.com correct and it it's already uh in, in, in good shape. Like it, it looks good. <laughs> well, um, yeah, we, we got to love mm -hmm. it. That, that was, you know, when you start, you're, you're putting out that MVP, the minimum viable product, mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, what, what my, mm -hmm. what my consultant said, you know, so obviously, you know, at some point I want to see a map with, you know, little dots for insure women all across the country and, you know, places where you can put your zip code in and find, you know, insure women close to you so that you have this 
safe space to go buy insurance. Um, yeah, and then obviously there's a lot of education, you know, a lot of education when we want to do uh, education for the consumer and also education for the agents. But yeah, and it just really, I mean, like to get, you know, carrier support. So, you know, I'm talking to carriers right now, trying to get them on board, you know, as insurewomen advocates and sponsors, partners, whatever word we want to use now. <laughs> I, I would, th I would think that carriers would be enthusiastic supporters. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, and yeah, and there are several, several that have started doing women focused events, um, like Westfield was one and one of my um, favorites. Yeah, Safeco. Mm -hmm. And actually, Westfield was the first company to call me when Insure Women came out. They're like, what, what are you doing? I'm no, sorry. Not I'm surprising. I, have, I have a window that one of my clients just walked by. Uh, um, but yeah, Westfield called me right, you know, kind of right away and like, what are you doing? We want to be part of it. We want to support you. We want to help you. So yeah. And then uh, Liberty Mutual and Safeco actually in the mid Atlantic region had a like two day women's event, you know, just talking about, you know, probably what your book is going to talk about. <laughs> no, not, not my book. Uh, oh, yeah, Sarah no, Mooney's book, book okay. that, that insurance okay. nurse is, is publishing. Uh, coming okay. Out probably, okay, got it. Probably March of, of this year. Uh, okay. But, but uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that, that, that we're publishing it. Uh, yeah. Because she's she's yeah. had so, some uh, tough experiences uh, in yeah. the industry, and she's not the only one. There, there are oh, so many I've heard others. Some, and... Yeah, I mean, I I had heard some crazy stories. I'm not surprised she could write a book about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, the... even in twenty. I mean, even like this year. I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's kind of frightening, but yeah. So we 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 need all the support for yes, for, we do. for women and other do. diverse groups. Yeah, uh, and to, I do think the time the time is right. Obviously, I mean the time the time's always been right, but I I think now you know women are more they're going for what they want and you know and banding together you know to try and tr try and make some changes. So it's exciting. Twenty twenty two is going to be an exciting year. <laughs> very 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 exciting. Uh, Kim, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I, yeah. I uh, look forward to, to have you back as, as uh, you know, in, 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 in maybe at the end of 2022 to, to see how, yeah. how things took off. Yeah. Uh, and, and I invite everybody to, 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 to check, to check it out, uh, insurewomen.com. I, I will include yeah. the link to both insure women and to your LinkedIn profile yeah, that'd be great. Uh, when yeah. this goes live. Uh, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that, that I got in front of you early to, to, to amplify your <laughs> message. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I am. I, yeah, it's it, it's big. I, I can tell you on, on our side, on insurance nerds, we we are well. My my, my co-founder is, is is a woman, and and oh, and we we have always struggled with with uh, why is most of our content written by by men. Um, right, even in in our world where where yeah, where I'll we're a lot younger, I'll be happy to provide content for you. Um, <laughs> awesome. Uh, even even in our world where we're a lot younger and and, and right where where I think our readers are very very diverse. It's mm. still hard to 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 uh, to 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 uh, to create enough exactly. of a safe space. Right. Right. For, yeah. for, but for I, but I appreciate you at least. Yeah, I appreciate you at least trying and, and knowing that that's an issue. So that that's that's a start. That's a start. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome, Tony. Thank you. Happy New Year. Oh, probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that happy New Year. <laughs> this will probably come out late, but, but happy New okay. Year. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tony. All right.